Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Epiphany. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollitt. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today the Church throughout the world remembers or celebrates the epiphany, the revelation of the Lord to all nations. And we are called to reveal God to those we meet every day. For the times perhaps we notice we have not done that. Let's ask the Lord for mercy, forgiveness, but most of all, let's ask the Lord to grace us with the ability to reveal God to those whom we meet. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we praise you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who on this day revealed your only begotten Son to the nations by the guidance of a star, grant in your mercy that we who know you already by faith may be brought to behold the beauty of your sublime glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will be seen upon you. And nations shall walk by your light, and kings in the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes round about and see. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far, and your daughters shall be carried in the arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. 
a multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All nations on earth shall fall prostrate before you, O Lord. All nations on earth shall fall prostrate before you, O Lord. O God, give your judgment to the king, to a king's son your justice, that he may judge your people in justice and your poor in right judgment. All nations on earth shall fall prostrate before you, O Lord. In his days shall justice flourish and great peace till the moon is no more. He shall rule from sea to sea, from the river to the bounds of the earth. All All nations nations on earth shall shall fall prostrate before you, you, O Lord. The kings of Tarshish and the islands shall pay him tribute. The kings of Sheba and Seba shall bring him gifts. Before him all kings shall fall prostrate. All nations shall serve him. All All nations nations on earth shall shall fall prostrate before you, O Lord. For he shall save the needy when they cry, the poor and those who are helpless. He will have pity on the weak and the needy and save the lives of the needy. All All nations nations on earth earth shall fall prostrate before you, you, O Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brethren, I assume that you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for you, how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, which was not made known to the sons of men in other generations, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is how the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. We have seen his star in the east, and have come to worship the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, Wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them whether Christ was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, For so it is written by the prophet. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will govern my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, Bring me word, so that I too may come and worship him. When they heard the king, they went their way. And behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them, till it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. 
the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. How radical are you? It seems to me by telling us the story of the Magi, Matthew is trying to say something about the radicalness of the kingdom of God and therefore its implication for us. This is not a very good translation of this gospel because we are told in the original that they are magi and no gender is given to these people who come looking for the Lord. And yet Matthew is writing predominantly for a Jewish community, Israel, as we hear in that first reading, who consider themselves to be the only chosen of God. They had hoped and longed to see the Messiah, but there was an exclusiveness in Israel's thought. And now Matthew, in the midst of this Jewish community where he writes his gospel, presents Gentiles, people from the East, Magi, however many they were, as the first to see and believe in the Messiah. And so this feast of God's revelation to all, the Epiphany, it seems to me, has got some radical lessons for us if we want to understand who Jesus is. I want to suggest three things that we can reflect on on this Feast of the Epiphany. Notice, first of all, that God is for all people everywhere. These magi are foreigners. They are different. They are Gentiles. They, too, represent everybody. All the nations beyond Israel are far and distant lands. Some people have felt very uncomfortable with the message of Pope Francis in almost now 10 years, a message that he's preached over and over again of inclusivity. Yet it seems to me the more we read and ponder the gospel, the Jesus of the gospels, the more we meet and encounter someone who is for all people and is not exclusive. And it seems to me that Pope Francis is spot on. Perhaps we need to hear the gospel over and over again, year in and year out, because we don't ever quite get what it means. How often don't we seek to put barriers out to block people, especially in our religious community? Because they don't hold the same worldview as us. They don't perhaps hold to the same dogma as us. Maybe at times they look different to us. And so we can be very exclusive. It seems to me that right from the beginning of Jesus' life, from this infancy narrative to the end of his life, we encounter a Jesus who is inclusive. That is one of the key characteristics of this person, Jesus. It is those who exclude often religious authorities that Jesus hits out at most in his life. Welcome and hospitality in diversity is what Jesus stands for. And that should be a distinctive mark of our Christian community. We are not inclusive when we exclude people, and therefore we are not true disciples of Jesus. And there still are so many people and so many categories of people that we exclude in the church. Notice something else. The interplay between wonder and fear 
in that gospel. We are told only five things about these magi. They follow a star, they ask for directions to a foreign land, they are overwhelmed with joy when they find the child, they are warned not to go back to Herod, and therefore they go by another road. Herod, on the other hand, we are told, is troubled right at the beginning. Troubled by the prospect that someone might succeed him. And so he whips up anxiety in that community. We are told he tries to manipulate things and even those magi to find the child. The story tells us that eventually his deceit is uncovered and he is left without knowledge and therefore even more fear and orders the killing of all baby boys. Is Matthew trying to say something to us about fear being the enemy of Christian life? So often perhaps we think doubt is the enemy, but is fear not the enemy of Christian life? It entraps us and when we are entrapped, we infect other people. How often are we not most fearful when our power or authority is threatened? When what is familiar to us is threatened? When strangers or people of different persuasions come into our midst? Sometimes we react like Herod. We tell lies, we are deceitful, we cheat in order to try and maintain the status quo that we feel comfortable with. But like Herod, that too will end in death. Maybe not the death of infants, but the death of our own spirits and maybe even of other people who we suck into this vortex. And so Matthew wants us to see this story not as some exotic travel log, but rather a story about the choices that we make, the choices that lie before all Christians, the choice to be joyful and wonder or to live in a place of fear. Notice, thirdly, that these magi embark upon a journey. They're not sure what this journey will hold. Why they go on that journey, we are not told. Maybe they were dissatisfied with their lives. Maybe there was some inner unrest that was going on in their own hearts. Some disillusionment with where they found themselves. And that propels them to go seeking. We are told that they are wise. Could they represent for us our need to search for truth, our need to search for God, and hence wisdom in its real sense? They recognize their own desire, and they see that this desire can only be fulfilled by something greater, and that is wisdom, not their own sense of what they must do, but it will be fulfilled by something or someone greater. We live in a world which so often people find and feel dissatisfied, and there's this inner unrest and disillusionment. The wisdom of the Magi is that they seek a new beginning, a way of being that will give them life. They recognize and name that they are not happy. And so maybe they speak to our inner aspirations as well, the deep-seated desire in each of us to journey towards happiness and fulfillment, which ultimately will only be found as they discover in an encounter with Jesus, who is the Christ. Notice that they follow a star. I wonder what star is leading you at this time. 
What star is inviting you as they were invited at this time? And finally, I want to say the Magi are taken back to their own country by a different way, by a different road. They need to follow a star to find that child. But when they leave, they are able to find their own way home via a different road. I don't think Matthew is simply just mapping out for us a geographical journey. Matthew wants us to know that if we truly encounter Christ as they do, if we, if we go seeking and searching for Christ as they do in our own perhaps unrest and disillusionment, when we encounter Christ, we cannot but be the same. We will be compelled to take and to walk a different road. Let's pray today as we celebrate this feast of God's revelation, the Epiphany, that we would hold to what they teach us, that we have an inclusive God, that God helps us to see how our hearts can be open to wonder and yet sometimes how we are trapped in fear, that it is okay to acknowledge our disillusionment and our own sense of unrest within ourselves. And let's pray that those stars in our own lives would lead us to that encounter with Christ, which ultimately sends us on a new journey, a different way, and gives us new perspective. Let's pray together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, descending into hell. On the third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We have heard God's word spoken to us, and we respond to that word now, knowing that our God listens to our own desires and aspirations and hopes as we make our prayers known to him. For the whole church, that all who follow Jesus will continue to lead others to the light of Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For peace on earth that the peace of Christ will cover the world and become a reality for all nations. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who are sick and suffering, for all who have died, for all who suffer as a result of violence, war, or natural disasters, that the light of Christ will lead them out of their darkness. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who are seeking and searching for meaning and purpose in their lives, that they may come to see Christ as the source of all wisdom, peace, light, and love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our church, that it will be a strong community built on radical love and service of God and of others. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord our God, we give you thanks that you invite us all 
around this table. And we give you thanks too that you listen to all our prayers, no matter how or where we pray them, through Christ Jesus, your Son, and our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer fruit of the earth, work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. This is our nature. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer fruit of the vine. Work of our human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Lord, we ask you to see the peace of us with humble, contrite hearts. Wash thy our iniquities. Cleanse us of all our sins. Let's pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Look with favor, Lord, we pray, on these gifts of your church, in which are offered now not gold or frankincense or myrrh, but he who by them is proclaimed, sacrificed, and received, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as the light for all nations. And when he appeared in our own mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You're indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by your Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Buti, our Bishop, all the clergy, and all who minister to your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. 
welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let's pray now, as the Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer those around us a sign of God's peace. And we pray, Lamb of God, you Is take away the sins Lord. of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are we who are called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Body and blood of Christ bring us to life everlasting. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the Church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here.
Let us pray. Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord, always and everywhere, that we may perceive with clear sight and revere with true affection the mystery in which you have willed us to participate. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God who has called you out of darkness into his wonderful light pour out in kindness his blessing upon you and make your hearts firm in faith, in hope, and charity. Amen. And since in all confidence you follow Christ, who today appeared in the world as a light shining in darkness, may God make you too a light for all your brothers and sisters. Amen. And so when your pilgrimage is ended, may you come to him whom the Magi sought as they followed the star, and whom they found with great joy, the light from light, who is Christ the Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go now in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.